284. This is the number of Starbucks coffee shops only in Seoul. We rank number one in the world, followed by New York City. This is how much we spend on coffee a year, ranking sixth in the world, and considering how small our country is, this cannot be not too high. Yes, we love coffee. But why do we drink coffee? For what? According to the survey done by Job Korea in 2012, 46.7% of 635 people answered they drink coffee to wake themselves up and concentrate better. I, I guess many of you are going to agree with this result. You might quite often rely on Trevian Cafe coffee, possibly every day, just like me. However, have you ever thought about the ways to improve the effectiveness of coffee? Today, I'd like to introduce you three main ways to help you be more alert with the same amount of coffee. Let's begin with what sounds quite ironic. The most effective way to use coffee is to take a coffee nap just after drinking coffee. But be sure, no more than 20 minutes. Let me explain how it works. Coffee basically works as it prevents a hormone called adenosine from connecting to its receptors, a hormone which, which, which makes you tired and drowsy. As the shape and size of caffeine is so similar with that of adenosine, it causes the receptors to confuse between the two and connect to caffeine instead of adenosine. Meanwhile, taking a nap directly reduces the amount of adenosine in your body and caffeine needs 20 minutes to start functioning. Therefore, you can use the 20 minutes to reduce the amount of adenosine by taking a short nap, which will help your caffeine to compete with less amount of adenosine. However, what if your life is so busy that you don't even have a 20 minutes to take a nap but still want to wake up? Then I'd like you to pick up the appropriate times to drink coffee. Caffeine does not work the same every moment in the day, but it rather works counterproductive during some periods. To specify, I have to introduce you another kind of hormone named cortisol, which makes you feel alert and awake in contrast to adenosine. The level of it in your body the, in your body reaches its peak three times a day, 8 to 9 a.m., 12 to 1 p.m., and 5.30 to 6.30 p.m. It is better to avoid drinking coffee during these periods if you want your coffee to keep you awake, as it barely works. During this period, the extra stimulation with caffeine does not complement the function of cortisol, but merely replaces it. Therefore, it does not really change whether you drink coffee or not. Then, when should you drink coffee? It is when cortisol level is dropping, when your caffeine actually works to make up for the deficiency of cortisol, not just bothering it from working properly. As I've told you the ideal times to drink coffee, I'd like to recommend you the types of coffee which might help as a final step. Surprisingly, sweeter coffee turns out to boost up your concentration more than black coffee according to the research done by the University of Barcelona. This happens not fundamentally because it wakes you up more, but as the combination of caffeine and glucose reinforces your ability to memorize and sustain attention. If you are a great fan of black coffee who cannot give it up just like me, you can just, you can just re replace the sugar with other kinds of desserts you prefer. Until now, I've told you three simple ways to make best use of caffeine. To take a nap just after drinking one, in the best periods of the day when the cortisol level is decreasing with some sugar inside. Let me tell you some more details behind the surveys I introduced you earlier. The average price of Starbucks coffee in Korea ranks six in the world, which is almost twice that of USA. A half of 635 people answered they had suffered some adverse effects of caffeine as they took it too much. Therefore, it is obvious that too much caffeine takes a toll on your budget and health at the same time. Then, why don't you try to use it more effectively from now on? Thank you.